So the first thing that um, I think we should talk about is becoming a high value woman as a seeker of truth when you are keeping promises. So I'm going to pass it to Ruth and see and have her tell us what her views are on keeping promises. So go ahead, Ruth. Okay. Well, um, keeping promises is a really big one. It's because it means you understand commitment. It means you understand um, your effect on the world, your your um, your influence on the world, and how other things depend on you or need you or are really are counting on you. Maybe I would say that I shy away from the word depend because to be codependent is something that we don't want to be. But if something depends on you because life is better with you, you know, you're like in a symbiotic thing, um, they're depending on you. You've told them I can help you in this way. And, and they're, they're counting on that. You have, you have promised and keeping promises is huge. I feel like our generations, the, la- the younger generations have, they, ha- they don't know how to keep a promise. And part of that I'm sure is part of that is they don't know what promises to agree to. Yes. Um, I think you, you cannot keep a promise that you didn't agree to that. You know, then we would step into expectations, which is a whole other tangent. Um, but if you agree to it, if you told somebody you can count on me and they say, great, I'm going to give you that piece so that I can do my piece. You need to follow through with that. Um, and the, like the second that you realize, gosh, maybe I overpromised. you need to dive into that and how you can fulfill those promises still. And it's keeping those promises that makes us grow. Like we're being married. Like that's a goal for us as a high value woman. That's, we just want to, you know, connect. We want that like male advocate. We see that that's the blessing and marriage is a promise. It is a major promise. And it's lots of times like marriage, we get into promises that we're like, whoa, I didn't realize this was part of the promise. Having children is a promise. You promise God and this little human being before it comes, really before it's inside of you. I promise that I'm going to do everything I can to nurture you and protect you and love you and help you be your best self. And so sometimes during those two big promises, we're like, golly, geez, I didn't realize this was part of the promise. Um, so, but just like being able to push through, like I made the promise, I'm going to figure this crap out. I'm going to get people on my team. I'm going to learn what I need to learn. I'm going to change what I need to change. And it's those promises that make us grow. It's scary when we reach those moments where we're like, crap, I didn't realize this was part of the promise. But to see it through, some promises have an expiration date, but you are always a wife and you are always a mother. Like it's, you can put an X in front of it if you want to, but you are still always that to that person. And they gave you trust and they gave you a piece of them to say, this is important to me. I'm trusting you with this. And you're saying, okay, I will handle this for you. And then in return, you know, you'll get good people who can make promises to you also. But just that idea of like keeping promises is super important. It's part of the hierarchy. It's how you climb the hierarchy. If women around you cannot trust you, you drop in the hierarchy. I mean, that's just how it is. Um, and then also, if you can't keep promises to your like male advocate, he can't advocate for you. He's too busy taking care of the things that he trusted you to take care of. And by you keeping promises, you are now a team with him rather than a burden or a child or something he has to take care of or manage or blah, blah right? So mm-hmm. keeping promises is super important for you in that like male advocacy line and in your female hierarchy. Mm-hmm. I I love that because... I think that, especially I'm thinking as you're talking, I'm thinking about being a mom and how my kids don't realize that they have agreed to do something for me, for the family, for themselves. They don't have that recollection. They don't, they didn't connect the dots that keeping your promise. Well, I didn't promise you. I didn't say those words. Because that is one of the things that we're dealing with in this generation is everything is so literal because you can get out of it if it's, if it wasn't said, but I think what we're talking about here is there are certain things that are implied and we need to take responsibility for the things that are implied. If you say you're going to do something that is 
something that you have committed to and you should stand up to it. You should own it. Right. So as you're, um, in your counter, in your male counterparts, I think there's, it's really easy to not want to do things and just expect your partner to do it because you don't want to. And I think one of the things that my husband and I have, have really worked on and been, it's been at the front of our minds is not expecting or wanting them to do something that I can do. Like, I don't expect my husband to do something that I can, that I have the capabilities of doing. And so I always ask myself, if I'm going to ask him for something, if I'm going to ask him for help, if I'm going to ask him to do something or request something from him, I always ask myself, could I do that for myself? Am I asking him to do it because I don't want to do it because I just don't want to? Hi. <laughs> it's okay. Talking. We're moms. This is what we do. Yep. This is what we do. This is what we do. Um, and so sometimes I, I just want him to do it for me because I want him to do it for me. Right. Like it's a, oh, he would like to do that for me. So I'm going to allow him to do that for me. Right. But if it's something that I just don't want to do and I want to like the dishes or like, I just don't want to do the dishes. I could have time. I just don't want to, then I'm not going to ask him to do that. And I'm not going to expect him to do it. If I don't do it, I'm not going to be mad at him that he didn't do it. It's that weird, like expectation, like you were talking about. But when I, when we got married and we had the, our conversations, it was my promise to him, my commitment to him to take care of the inside of the house. And it was his commitment to me to take care of the outside of the house. We help each other in both of those things. I help him in the outside. He helps me in the inside, but it is my responsibility to make sure that it gets done in the inside. It's his responsibility to make sure it gets done in the outside. And part of that is asking for help, making requests, communicating, you know, those kinds of things. But I, I have made that promise to him. I've made that commitment to him. So yeah. Hi, buddy. And I think, I, again, I'm like writing a note. Now we need to talk about expectations in a different yeah. meeting. But yeah. promises are agreed upon. Expectations get sticky because, but mm -hmm. promises are something that you have very clearly implied, like specifically, not just what somebody expected you, because we can get into the whole like, but you promised me when we got married that you were going to have sex with me three times a week. And you're like, I did when, mm -hmm. right? Like, like mm -hmm. those, or like you promised when we got married that you would make us $500,000 a year. Well, I, when, right. Mm -hmm. So let me get into the expectations as opposed to the promises, which I think that's the thing that we need to talk about, but the promises of, if you've agreed to it, then you need to follow through on it yep. as much for yourself as them. That's how we grow. It challenges us to become bigger and better. Absolutely. More useful, more valuable. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. 